Hi everyone, Pika has just released their brand new 2.2 video model which has much better quality and consistency. You can also generate 10 second videos now and they've released a brand new feature on the platform called Pika Frames. So this is essentially keyframing. Now keyframing is nothing new but the way that Pika Frames does this transitioning from one image to another looks really amazing and I'll be showing you a whole bunch of creative use cases that you can try. So let's dive straight into it. So from the home page, at the bottom you should automatically have the 2.2 model selected. If you don't, just make sure that you left click on here and select 2.2. So with the 2.2 model, by default, if I click on settings, you will be generating videos at 1080p resolution. So you'll get much better quality and detail as well as consistency with your end results. And now for the first time ever, there's a brand new icon over here, which is this clock. It allows you to generate videos that are either five seconds long or 10 seconds long. And this applies to text to video, image to video, as well as Pika scenes, and then the brand new feature over here called Pika frames. By the way, if you guys are going to do Pika scenes, Scenes, I would still recommend using the 2.1 model. It just gives you better results. So I hope they actually improve that. Anyway, this video is going to be focused on this brand new feature over here called Pika Frames. So make sure you left click to select that and I'll be explaining this in detail. So Pika Frames allows you to create these very creative transitions between images. You'll upload a first frame and a last frame. You'll type in a prompt and you'll click on this icon to generate the video. So now you just simply drag and drop your images over here. So I'm going to upload my first frame, which is going to be my opening shot, and then my last frame, which is going to be my closing shot. Now here's just a bonus tip. If you guys want to generate images completely for free, you can still use Google's image FX and use image in three to generate beautiful imagery like this. So check this out. Uh, this is the prompt that I use to actually get images like this. And then you can save them off this platform and you can use them as your inputs on Pika frames. So at this point, I can actually click on this button to start generating a video, but I'm going to recommend that you include a prompt because it's better to essentially tell the AI how these images relate to each other and what should actually be happening with that transition. So this is the prompt that I'm using. And I've noticed whenever I start my prompting over here with the following term, smooth, seamless transition, I always get really good results. And then the rest of this prompt is obviously going to tell the AI what should be happening with that transition. So once I've got my prompt in place and my images, I can click on generate right now, or I can change the duration. Now, this is the first AI video model I've seen where you can actually choose a duration between one to 10 seconds. So this is amazing. You can only do this with Pika frames, by the way. Uh, but this is great. So if you want, you know, maybe a transition to happen a lot quicker, you can choose two seconds, five seconds, or even 10 seconds. So once you've selected your duration, then you can click on this button and start generating your video. So these are my end results at different durations. And you can see how you can use the element of time to do storytelling. So if you want your transition to happen a lot faster, put it on two seconds and you'll even get faster camera motion. If you want something to be more drawn out and maybe in slow motion, then 10 seconds will maybe work better. If you want a good in-between value, then five seconds is going to work well for you. This really depends on what type of story you're trying to tell. But the fact that you can control that duration, I think is amazing. This means that you can get very creative with this. So what I've done over here is I've taken my last frame from my previous video and now made it my first frame. So this means that I'm continuing that visual story. I've also generated a new image over here because now I'm going to create a new transition. I've also adjusted my prompt as needed and I actually put this one on two seconds and it's given me this beautiful transition. So this is another great way to continue your storytelling. And with whatever video uh, editing software that you're using, you can then stitch these videos together to create something that's more cohesive. So now I want to show you some very creative use cases that you can try with Pika frames. You can easily use Pika frames to create these videos of someone aging. So to do this, you can see over here, my first frame is an image of an adult and my last frame is an image of an elderly person. And then the only thing I need to type over here with my prompt is smooth seamless transition. And it's going to create that video for you that looks amazing. If you guys want to generate images like this, you can do it for free using Google's image effects. However, the censorship is a little bit extreme because you can only generate uh, images of adults and elderly. This is the prompt I'm using. Uh, the only thing you need to change in your prompt over here, instead of saying adults, you'll change that to elderly or toddler or teenager, but you must be descriptive. You can see 
I've even specified what color the hair is, as well as the color of the eyes and the items of clothing. That just helps to create a more consistent uh, looking image throughout those different ages. Now, if you guys go the paid route, you will have less censorship on here. And I'm using FreePick for this. You can also use Google Image N3 on here and even other services for generating images. But then you can generate uh, teenagers and toddlers and you can do the full range. So you can go from toddler all the way to elder, uh, an elderly person. And yeah, that's how easy it is to do using PicoFrame. So give it a try. So you can get creative with this. You can transition between different people. Remember Michael Jackson's black and white music video? Well, you can essentially do that with Pika frames. Or maybe create a transformation. Maybe someone's morphing into a werewolf. Get creative and have fun. You can create these really interesting videos where someone's item of clothing just rapidly changes on their body. And to show you how this was created, you can see I've got a first frame and a last frame. But you'll notice that in this video, the person's face as well as the background hasn't changed. So how did I actually do this? So the item of clothing was actually changed using in-painting. Now you can do in-painting with free pick. Keep in mind this is a paid service, but if you wanted to try this, this is a very easy way to do it. You just click over here and you select retouch. Now you would essentially just drag and drop your image over here right to upload the image and then you just adjust the brush size so you want to paint a mask over the the uh, the area of the image that you actually want to change so I'm going to change this out this item of clothing over here so I'm just going to paint a mask on his jacket just like this doesn't have to be super accurate right as, uh, as soon as I got my mask in place I can type in what I want this to represent so I can say a blue puffer jacket right and it's only going to change this region where I've created this mask now I can click on retouch and the AI is automatically going to change this item of clothing for me so I'll just wait for it to generate give it a couple seconds and here we go so now I've got some different garments that I can select over here all right obviously some images have done a much better job than the other ones so whichever one that I like I can select that and then click on apply let's say I like this one click on apply and then I can now save this image I can export it and that can become my last frame so you can see over here I've got the start frame and the end frame and then the prompt that I used is just smooth seamless transition and I can get some really interesting looking videos just like this so try this, put the term whip pan in your prompt and you'll be able to create these very fast camera pans where the background also gets blurred. So it's quite a popular technique in film and this can be used to create energy or adrenaline in a scene and you can even use it to jump through space and time. So this is very interesting and also very useful, but you can use images to control camera movement to focus on a very specific part of your generated video. So the way that I've done this is actually very simple. You can see my first frame over here is the image in its entirety. And then the second frame is essentially cropped in a lot closer onto the face. And because I wanted the camera to be focused on the eyes and on those sunglasses, I then guide this with a prompt and I get a very cool end result. So you guys should definitely give this a try if you want to focus focus on something very specific. So this was something fun to mess around with. I actually managed to make a flower rapidly grow and to do this is actually very simple. So I generated an image of a flower against a uh, black background and then I went over to free pick. I went to retouch uh, because this allows me to do in painting but I can also erase elements from an image. So I would drag and drop my image in here and then over here by erase I would just increase the brush size and simply paint over this entire region over here where you see all of these flowers right as simple as this okay so just paint over all the flowers and then all I have to do is click on retouch and the AI is automatically going to remove these flowers for me right then I would do the same over here on these shadows because I wouldn't want those shadows to be casted uh, now obviously I'd have to look for an image over here that works well uh, with this one again I could literally just in paint these imperfections out of the image so once I had an image that that's essentially on its own which is an image like this right I'll show you the start frame and the end frame so I'll just click on reprompt so that it puts all of these elements back in here you can see I've got my first frame and then my last frame and this is the prompt that I used and it gives me a really interesting result where you can make a flower rapidly grow 
you can easily generate these awesome isometric video animations and you can generate the images to do this for free. So if you guys head over to Google's ImageFX, you can use ImageN3 and this is the prompt that I'm using. So the most important part of this prompt is to type in imagine an isometric view of a rectangular room. And then you guys can describe all of the other elements that are supposed to be in this room. So I went for something that's 90s themed with the CRT television and all of these other elements. Also make sure the aspect ratio is square so that you can see the entirety of this isometric uh, room. And if you guys want to see what's the prompt for this, I'll show you right now. So you can pause the video over here if you maybe want to generate a 90s themed room, to, room as well. And then the next part is to actually generate an empty room. So for the prompt over here, you can see that I said, imagine an isometric view of an empty rectangular room. And then I'm also specifying, you know, what's the other element. So in this case, I wanted the color of the wall to be, you know, the same with the color of the wall from this image where the room is actually full of furniture. Then I also said that there is a wooden floor just so it's a little bit more consistent, but obviously you can do whatever you want. Then once you've got both of these images and you've downloaded them and saved them from ImageFX, you go back to Pika you go to Pika frames, your first frame is going to be the empty room and your last frame is going to be the room with all of the furniture. Then you type in the prompt, smooth seamless transition, click on generate and also choose a duration and you can get these awesome animations where a room will rapidly fill with furniture. Definitely play around with the elements and especially the element of fire. I've noticed that Pika frames creates these really mind blowing transitions that includes fire. And yes, this is an excuse to play with fire and have fun with it. As you can see over here, I turned this eagle, this Philippine eagle into a flaming eagle. I also experimented with something fashion related and turned a dress made out of bark that's on fire into a dress made out of ferns and flowers. So get creative and have fun. You can try and generate an opening title. So as you can see over here, there's this beautiful gradient and then eventually the title appears. So to do this is super simple. Uh, again, you just need two images. So the first image over here is going to be this gradient uh, image that I've generated with FreePick, uh, which is this image, right? As my starting frame. And then the next frame is going to be the image that has my text included. Right, and then that transition that happens between these two images with this prompt, you can see I said smooth seamless transition, a swirling gradient with shapes, reveals text, and then it gives me this awesome end result. So go ahead and experiment with this as well if you guys maybe want to create some opening titles. You can definitely try to generate these videos with an ink splatter or this ink splash animation that reveals another image. And I think this looks really cool. So to actually generate these images, I used FreePick uh, because on FreePick, you can actually click on styles and there's an ink print style over here. So I already have that set up for me. And then the prompt that I used over here to generate this image is this following prompt. Then I generated another image with this ink splatter, just like that. And then back on Pika, again, it's as simple as uploading the ink splatter as my first frame and then the Samurai General as the last frame. And then this is the prompt that I used to create this beautiful revealing transition. So maybe give this a try. And just one more tip, if you actually make the first frame a completely white frame in this case, you'll actually get the second image to be revealed, uh, which actually looks quite interesting. Like here's an example where, I mean, you can see the prompt over here as well. The Samurai General just appears on this white canvas from black smoke. And uh, I think these transitions look very interesting. Uh, there's another example. So yeah, definitely give this a try if you guys want to go the route of creating these ink splash uh, revealing animations. You can use Pika frames to generate loops. The easiest way to do that is to use the same image as both your first frame and your last frame. You then type in a prompt describing what you actually want to happen between that transition and you'll get a looping video just like this. So you'll notice when it plays, when it gets to the end of that five seconds, it then loops back to that first frame. And because both frames are the same, it's going to create a looping video. Another creative loop that you can try is called a boomerang loop. And you can do this with editing software. So if you've generated a video using Pika frames, you essentially need to just duplicate this video. So I'm going to hold on Alt and drag over here to duplicate it. Now over here, I just need to select this video and there's a button here called reverse. So you can see over here when it gets to the end, the video now reverses and starts from this image and plays back to the beginning. 
So it creates what's regarded as a boomerang loop. And it literally is the simple to do while you're using CapCut. Or you can do it in any other editing software that allows you to reverse a video. You can also create a loop using two separate videos that you've generated with Pika frames. For instance, this first video, this was the start frame and this is the end frame. So that's one video. Then I generated another one where this image is now the start frame and this image is the end frame. But because it's a different video, the actions between these two videos are completely different, which is what makes it very unique. But you're still going to get that loop that happens. So give this a try and experiment with looping using Pika frames. So I'm all about transparency. If you guys want to use the 2.2 model, you are going to need a subscription. So you will have to subscribe to the $10 plan. And if you want to, you guys can see how much credits are actually being consumed for every generation. So I just wanted to get that out there so you guys know what's required in order to use this new model. All right, so that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Now you guys can see how powerful Pika Frames is. You can do so much with keyframing. And if you guys discover any other creative use cases, feel free to let the community know by dropping a comment down below. And yeah, go out there and create some magic. So you guys are super awesome. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.